games and a grand final. Jason Bennett, Campbell Brown, I reckon Alicia every single Eva and bounce. Nigel Carmody. Sorry, Jason. I reckon every single opening bounce we've had for the final series, that's happened. Anticlimactic. It's a pretty amazing advertisement for the throw-up, which is correct. And here is John O'Rourke. We spoke about him early. Off to Morrison. Carves his way through a couple. Handball hung for Willsmore, which allowed Menadieu in. Ballard working in close quarters. Griffiths Bolton off a couple of goals last week. Warren heavily spreads it wide for Miles. And Box Hill try and slip into their possession mode, but it's going to be hard with the footing like it is. And Connor Glass is hot tied. Now the Irishman just slipped up underfoot. It's quite a heavy deck. So good early forward pressure from Cal Moore, who was outstanding in the elimination final win over Collingwood. Sends this deep. Griffiths, child, his bodies. And it's a Hawks free. Kurt heavily to take it. Love it, child. Played the majority of this year down back. We know he can pinch it in the ruck and go forward. He's kicked some goals this year, but surprising starting forward. Good strong hands from Beasley and Batchelor. Batchelor paid the mark against Pittanet. Jake Batchelor pumps it back inside 50 again. Scholl in the middle of that pack and standing at the back and reading it best is Kel Moore. What a start for the 21-year-old from originally Essendon. Grew up around the Essendon area, played at Aberfeldy and called her under 18s, played basketball as a junior and has been sort of seen as a key position swingman project for the Tigers over the last couple of years. Played just the two AFL games last season. None this year. And a chance for the opening goal of the preliminary final. So the ideal start for Cal Moore and the Tigers and a bit of push and shove after all of that. And who would have thought Steve Morris would be involved, the shrinking violet that he is. He loves it, doesn't he, the physicality of the game. And they've come to play Richmond. Two inside 50 entries and already one goal. A goal a game in the VFL this year for Moore. Miles will streak forward and give Box Hill their first inside 50. Bachelor is the goalkeeper on this occasion. Steadies himself and can pick off a target in Markov, who is one of the players who... There's a pair of screws waiting for him if the surface requires. Half volley for Griffiths. Sweeping on a bit of strong tackle applied to Markov, who was doing the follow-up work. Morrison amongst the Hawks flying in, and there's bodies everywhere, Brownie. Plenty happening, not surprisingly. Kurt Heavily almost in the Steve Morris role for the Hawks. Now both of these sides need to taking a backward step at the moment in the physicality stakes. Hampson tried to get it to Miles. White Cross got in the way. Brolick gave it up to Hampson. Tigers again go forward. This is Miles. Goes towards Griffiths, has front position against Heatherly. Hams there to tidy it up through the hands of O'Rourke. Warren to Hams, needs to be quick, run down and gone. Stengel was the man that got him, he's lightning quick and was instrumental early last week with three goals in the first quarter. That's a great run down tackle. So the Tigers with good early energy. Stengel back inside 50, Brolick goes back with the flight. Walker. A one-two with Brolic, but it's going to come straight back. Here's Bachelor again, getting plenty of it early. He'll set them up from the back, as will this man, Jaden Short, almost their designated kicker in board for Alice, who's been in the best players in both finals so far. Sizzles a left football, gets to the back for Chol. He wanted Menadju, thought too long about it. And Dave Mirror with a crucial stop. The most capped player. On the behind the play again, as you can see at the top of the screen. It is, as they know, captain of Box Hill that have played more games than Dave Muir had a great career. Pitternet marked on the stretch, released to O'Rourke, who was nearly run down. Miles has been super prominent early. Handball had too much on it, though, for Brolic. Bachelor again with work to do in defensive 50. It works its way to conquer, to Alice. Looking for options, brings it inboard. Beasley will share it with Conker. Attacks the corridor and can find Miles. Chance for Miles to run away and kick it long inside 50. Chol's going to have a couple to beat in the air. Doesn't get to the contest. And again, Dave Mirror picks it off. Terrible kick from Mirror. Opens the door. Hampson to Chol. Looks for an option. Goes himself. Scrubby left foot kick. Mirror versus Moore. Just need a little bit more composure with the footy there, Chol. He had Steve Morris bursting past him. He just needed to give that handball rather than wheel onto his left boot. But... Very slippery conditions, both underfoot and with the football. 
And one of the better kicks in the side is Dave Mira, so... A lot of surface water around out there at the moment. Pit net lays it to the front of the contest. Miles on the bottom of that, as always. Brolic wraps him up. Well, Boxilla, the number one side in the competition for kicking efficiency. Already we've seen them make a few skill errors today by foot. Anthony Miles having a super year. He's been in the coaches' votes 11 of the 12 games this season. Pittanet touched off his boot through the hands of Alice, who then lays a crunching tackle. Ball spills out of Morrison's hands. Stengel flips it to Miles. He goes towards Moore, who started well. Glass does well on this occasion. Wills Moore to tidy up. Hams has to bang it on the boot quickly, which he does. Going back with the flight was Fisher. He'll get the free kick. It's going to come back to Joe Fisher, centre wing. They were nearly out there to the Hawks, and Fisher knows it. Quick to take it to Willsmore, who's normally stylish on that left boot, wants it deep for Murphy. Garth wait there to trap it, and will fall it over the boundary line. He did really well there, Garth wait just protecting the space. Billy Murphy was looking to get out over the back. They just look really composed down back at the moment. Conker, Bachelor, Garth wait Every time the ball has gone inside 50 for Box Hill, Richmond have been able to counter. Hampson through the legs of Bachelor. Eventually finding it Lloyd, Anthony Miles, his fourth possession. Hunt took on the Willsmore tackle and can release Menadju who slides his way through a couple. Runs out of options. Morris around Pittanet to Lloyd and back to Morris. And the link-up game begins for the Tigers. Alice tried to slip the tackle, turned over to Glass, spun the full 360. Stewart shovels it. Walker through traffic into the centre of the ground and trying to find his legs desperately was Hanrahan. He works it to Murphy, almost run down. Tumbling kick forward, Tay Miles at the back, beaten by a couple of Tigers. Garth waits to relieve. He goes short to Hunt at defensive 50, who can chip it over the top to Conker. The Pechel is doing a really good job of just zoning off his direct opponent and being almost like the quarterback on the last line on a few occasions. It's only been him, and he had a critical play in that play passage then. Conker to Hampson, couldn't take the mark, it spills to the front and Morrison, Glass under pressure, confronted by three Tigers, feeds a handball to O'Rourke, slick hands to Willsmore, he's immediately run down, Lloyd can't find the handle, has it now, accelerates away from Pittanet, draws a man to him, gives it over the top to Short, Short delivers inside 50 to Chol. Well, he's the number one player for the Richmond side at contested marks. Very rarely, if he gets a running jump at it, does he drop them. He's taken 20 contested marks in 20 games. He's played every game for Richmond, and he's got an opportunity. It's a great story. Born in Sudan, moved to Egypt as a refugee at the age of three, moved to Queensland at the age of eight. Kicked 10 goals in his first ever game of Aussie Rules footy. Local footy back in 2010. But he's offline on this occasion. The Tigers with a good start. No wonder he fell in love with the game. Ten goals in his first match. You'd be thinking, how easy is this? You're not going to, uh, you're not going to give that sport up anytime soon. It's Hay Miles with three so far for Box Hill. A huge turnover across virtually in soccer terms. Morris, a clever paddle that just didn't work for Bolton and Box Hill again. Their work out of defensive 50 is questionable at the moment, Campbell. It's by foot. They're uh, they're just turning the ball over. Under no pressure whatsoever. For Dave the skipper. Mirror in his 15th final. Kicking efficiency for Box Hill, 30% right now. Pittanet stood his ground and managed to draw the free kick. You can see Box Hill are desperate to try and move the ball as quickly as possible with this remastered forward line they're running with today. Heavily flew from the back. Beasley so good in the final series so far. As has Alice Markov of Arden Marriage. Thinks through it. Dumps the kick forward. Glass took the initiative in the front spot on Child. Griffiths, a good pickup for a big man. It comes free. Menager with a sidestep and the completion. The Tigers have got both goals. Healthy crowd inside Fort Burn Stadium. And a queue of people waiting to get in as well. The biggest crowd we've had in the final series so far. The Tiger Army out in number, but plenty of Box Hill fans as well. As we head down to Alicia Eva. Alicia, very blustery before the game. Is it going right to left as we're watching it on screen? It's certainly favouring the Richmond end at the moment. And I tell you what, it's very loud down here, boys. Plenty of people have jumped on the Tiger, tiger train. Darley with the tap. Taken by Markov. Once again, Richmond in possession. This is Griffith sliding in. Great to see him back playing footy after some concussion issues. 
earlier in the season. Launches it high and long inside 50. Off the hands of Moore. Mirror at the back for the Hawks. Has to go back and win it again. Under pressure, flips it over the top to Aducci. Aducci to Brolic. Again, he shanks the kick. Heading towards the line, Garthwaite gets there first. It's a slippery football. Well, the Box Hill game plan is based on kicking, maintaining possession and using the ball well at the moment. They're going at 23% by foot, so that's why their game is breaking down at the moment. Yeah, it's traditionally uncontested possession. Number one in the competition for short kicks. Number one in the competition for kicking efficiency normally. Yeah. It's their hallmark, but today it's letting them down early. Miles to Lloyd. Again goes in the more direction, being dangerous early. Off the hands of Mirror, who's doing a power of work down there for his side. Great start from the Tigers. They've had all the play inside 50s, 10 to 3 in the opening 12 minutes. They're dominating the territory battle at the moment. Pit and Ed with Troll doing the forward line ruck work. And that's where Jones and Vickery being out of this side, they've got no bailout kick up the wing where you can just kick it to a big guy. Hopefully he can contest it, mark the ball or bring it to ground. At the moment, they're just really battling. Sam Lloyd's work at that stoppage, rewarded with a free kick for in the back. And another player who's been so electric in this final series. Three goals last week. The go-ahead goal against Collingwood in the elimination final. Of course, he was one of three emergencies for the AFL qualifying final, so still harbouring hope. And to boot, he's sensational in front of goal. Three straight to the Tigers. Richmond AFL players out in numbers supporting their VFL team. Nathan Broad there, caddy at the back with Prestia. Dylan Grimes, Trent Cotchin, Sean Grigg, Basha Hawley, all watching on as a group. A real sense of destiny about yeah, the Tigers in 2017. Sense of connection amongst both sides at the moment, the AFL side and the VFL side. We had a lot of the Richmond players talk about it. JJ List tonight, Monday night, about how they're, they're all connected. Pitnet, athletic out of the ruck. Just Jackie Chanded out of midair. Bachelor taken high. And we saw the Bulldogs ride that wave of momentum last yep. year, the two-team, one-club philosophy. They really feed off each other. And so far, Richmond are doing that in 2017. They've got a clean bill of health as well. Nearly a full list to choose from, so no injuries at all at Richmond. Except for Nathan Drummond, off the hands of Lloyd and out. That's unheard of at this time of year. We're you know, halfway through September when most players are hurt or they've been put out for end-of-season surgery at the moment. And just Nathan a, Drummond with his ACL. And from a VFL point of view, meant they've left out soldiers from this year like Brandon Wood and Caulfield from today's team. So they've got so much depth to choose from. Coming away is Hanrahan. Some of those Box Hill mids really start to get busy now. This is Murphy. Tries to run away from Daly. Keep it alive inside 50. Awkward bouncing ball. Kennedy came out hard to meet it. They pile in on top. Box Hill needing some time in possession. And Brownie should say that uncontested style of football, their half-back line usually sets up so well. They build from the back. Their mids get involved. But right now, the Tigers denying time and space. And as an example, Hanrahan gets his hands on the football, but under enormous pressure. And that's why a tackle by Stengel early in the game is just so important. Not only because he won that free kick, but it just spreads the perceived pressure on this Box Hill side. Every time they get the ball, they feel like they're getting hunted straight away. 17 kicks for the Hawks at 18% so far. And that's why Richmond are holding sway in the preliminary final. And Richmond are going at 77% by foot, so couldn't have more contrary between the two sides at the moment. Menadu to half forward. Ballard, full chested presented, brings it to ground level. Manor, impressive last week with two goals. Was probably looking for Stengel. Moore, Hemble chopped off, goes in for a second bite. Brolic, Heatherly, Morrison. Low kick to Warren. Former Roo trying to set Box Hill up from the back with some composure. Warren will switch. White cross. Back to Morrison. Brilliant debut in round 23, which was well earned. He's had an excellent first season at VFL level. Back to Mirror. There's plenty of experience on this Box Hill back line. Warren, White cross, Mirror play plenty of VFL football. Dave Mirror's fifth possession. Not too many of them have had much polish on them so far. Hampson went back with authority. Anthony Miles tried to come through. Gets it back from Menadju. Too much on that kick, though. It bounces on its point well. It almost summarises September for Richmond at the moment. Stengel kicks high to the square. 
and Whitecross, the veteran, sees it through. The Hawks under siege. Yeah, that inside 50 count now, 12 to 5 in favour of the Tigers, and they look dangerous every time they go in there. Dave Mirror and his defence needing some sort of relief right now. There's not a lot of run either for the Box Hill players. They're all very flat-footed at the moment. Very insular at the moment, Box Hill. He's just... All Tigers, Bachelor is just carving them up. He's dominating. Dribbles it along the ground to Dali. He's got a penetrating right boot. Pumps it high to the square. Chol again the target. Front and centre. Tracking it is Morris. And again they put the pressure on. Force the turnover and this time it's Markov, the beneficiary. Chris what a start Newman. from the Tigers. Chris Newman just looking a little bit shell-shocked at the moment. They cannot get the game on their terms at all, which is a credit to this Richmond side. So Olive Markov, just the one behind this season in the VFL. He's kicked 2-2 in his career from a tight angle. And that sums up how the Tigers are travelling right now. So the pressure again from Steve Morris forces the turnover. Oleg Markov, just his sixth goal in a Richmond jumper at any level. He's played 36 games for the Tigers. Beautiful finish as we head down to Alicia. Well, Chris Newman's opted to play with two players back behind the footy now. So they're going with eight in their back line. They're trying to stem this flow. And it's needed to. O'Rourke taken out of it. Anthony Miles, another clearance. Child at the back. Read it best. Far too easy. I think that's the reason they've thrown Marby Shoal forward as well, just to try and spread the Box Hill defenders for some height. Great work out of the middle of the ground here by Miles, as we've seen time and time again. But that's a massive mismatch. How is it? How has Marby or Chol lost from a stoppage within 10, 12 seconds, Brownie? Bit of ball watching there from the Box Hill captain, Dave Mira, and undersized as well. Already got a behind. Two goals, three occasions this year for Chol. Another one. Richmond are irresistible right now. Really important here at Fort Burn Stadium, Northport, to be able to win the ball out of the middle. It's a small ground, and if you can get out of the middle, you give your forwards every opportunity, and that's exactly what happened. Miles straight out of the middle, show mark goal. Situation getting desperate early for Box Hill. They need to get their hands on the football and start to get some control in this game as Lloyd comes away. Gives it to Dali. Another inside 50 coming up for the Tigers. Ball heads wide. And a free kick to the Tigers. Yeah, umpire calling it a block there, saying that Warren didn't allow Bolton to jump at that ball. Bolton flips it over the top. Menadju from a tight angle. Chips it towards the pocket. Was looking for Lennon. Spills to the back. Here's Chol again. Snaps a goal. Misses. He's been very lively up forward. Involved in everything. It's a confidence player. It's been a great start for him. Great start for Richmond. Nine scoring shots to none in the opening 20 minutes of the preliminary final. He's turning into a good swing man as well. We know he can play down back, but he's kicked 13 goals now for the year and he can pinch it in the ruck. So the more strings he can add to his bow, the more chance he'll give himself of becoming a regular AFL player. Bert Headley takes the mark. Again, we see Box Hill unable to use that short kicking, uncontested game across half back that served them so well for many years. Stewart run down. Good pressure from Conker. Billy Murphy tries to slip a tackle. There's a free kick. High contact. And Murphy will take it. The first step for Box Hill here is to stem the bleeding. Get some time in possession. Start to get some control of the game. Murphy towards half forward. Stewart a fumble. Drops the mark. Let's the Tigers in. They win it through Lloyd. Quick kick, oh. Bolton has to stand strong and does. Hits the ground running. Back inside 50 again. Griffiths in best position, couldn't quite hang on. Glass under pressure. Warren under pressure. Stengel lurking. Runs into Fisher. Bolton, he's taken down by Glass. Oh, what a fantastic double effort there from Bolton. He's the man that stood under that high ball on the wing here. Huge contest stood his ground, took the mark, hit the ground running, and then he's the first player back inside 50 to follow up. Two Huge teams play. playing two distinctly different games, it seems, at the moment, and Hampson there to relieve with the mark. Another inside 50 entry. Charles sets himself, flew deep, and infringed. He just missed time, his leap there. So, so Joe Fisher, who'd started forward 
It's part of that Chris Newman forward setup. Again, off the line, and it's all slow play right now. And this Box is Hill. only Box Hill's eighth mark of the game. They're the number one side in the comp for uncontested marks. That's how they play, chipping it round. Richmond denying them the uncontested outlet mark. Kurt Heavily and Steve Morris have finally found each other and are going head to head. Alicia, Steve Morris once again setting the tone for his team. Yeah, he's really impressing me down here on ground level. He's only had the two disposals, but it's his pressure acts. He's causing turnovers purely by running hard. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know how he goes later in the game, but yeah, something to watch. Mitch O'Donnell's kick. There was a bit of a clearance there, and Hanrahan off and gone. The boy from St. Kevin's cuts back in board, and he's got Miles running through the channel. Options for it for Miles if he wants to go there. With Kennedy darting back to goal, he'll try and find him now. The Richmond Cavalry arrives, and that team defence denies Box Hill their, really their first genuine look at goal, Brownie. He's been the best man on the ground in this first quarter, Bachelor. Just the five disposals, but it's the deft little touches, the spoils through. He is playing a terrific game. He started on... He's been playing on Aiden Kennedy, but Kennedy hasn't been getting in dangerous spots, so he's just been zoning off and reading the ball better in the air. Short spears at low. Look at the ball use from the Tigers. This is Conker. It's like they're playing with a dry ball and Boxhill are playing with a wet footy at the moment. Conker chips over the top. That one well waited for Hunt, who had to stand and wait. Andrew Moore in late, the former Tiger. Just made him earn it after that, Mark. And Conker wants a piece of Andrew Moore. This one heating up a little. It's going to be 50 metres. And it is a fine line to walk if you're thinking about a grand final next week. But right now, Brownie, you just see the red mist and away you go. Yeah, well, you, you can understand Andrew Moore is a tough competitor. He's down 34 to 1. He's looking to spark his team up at the moment. So he just gave away that 50 metre penalty. and It's going to come back as Short was heading goalward. Taylor back Hunt. to Taylor Hunt. He, well, he's in range. And the way they're playing at the moment, he'll probably kick this. Just, you see the double movement. Nothing too much in it, but he's got the forearm. He's pushed it down. <laughs> Except the forearm ramming his head into the ground. Nothing much in it. But it's and great, then some sort of suplex. Great to see the Richmond players immediately fly the flag. They didn't just wait around. They you, were in there right away. You've missed your calling as a tribunal advocate. <laughs> Hunt from 48 metres. And the Tigers are rolling. Goal fire. So the Tigers with the opening six goals of the game. They lead by 39 points. Alicia Reaver, Andrew Moore, the former Tiger, trying to get things going for his side. He is. He's showing a lot of passion down here, but he's the instigator, instigator of a lot of spot fires. They just need to be careful, the Richmond players, that they don't, inst that they don't retaliate and do anything stupid. Pitonet went off the ground, but Alice there to catch it. Releases short. Low ball into space. Markov, so athletic, the family trait. The kick good as well. It's all just working. They can do no wrong at the moment. Their, their energy is just infectious at the moment, Richmond. They're really playing like a, a team possessed. Moore, who got things started with a goal two minutes in. Deep again. Charles set himself. Griffiths presented and almost batters his way into the fence. And he's a man who needs to stay out of harm's way after such a tough year. We saw them in the second quarter last week against Casey. Kick eight goals, five from only 16 inside 50 entries. I, I would argue this first quarter has been every bit as good as that. Particularly with the condition the ground is in. It might not look like it if you're just joining us, but pretty heavy underfoot here at Fortburn Stadium is Chol with a strong tackle. Lloyd's kick smothered. Box Hill again with Richmond right up in their face. Under pressure. Mira, it works its way to him. He has some time and can find Glass. So Connor Glass goes laterally. No one to kick to up the line here. Richmond pressure outstanding again. Manning everyone up. You can see, look at this, one-on-ones everywhere. And that's the danger when you play a small forward line. Here's no one to kick to. So Wills Moore will just have to thump it long. Pitonet's his target. He's outsized against Conker. Conker has the advantage, but Conker at ground level makes his presence felt. Aduchi, O'Rourke, uh, they, they've got really small forward line here. Marich, the veteran, Evans. against Pitonet. Mitch O'Donnell immediately run down and stripped of it by Lloyd. Willsmore lays the tackle on Menadieu. Mitch O'Donnell in there as well. 
the Tigers Moore. are hunting in this first term. Andrew Moore, now their best clearance player, is now standing at full forward. So Chris Newman just searching for answers at the moment. Jitternet tries to get it down. Miles gets there first. Good strong tackle laid on him by Whitecross. And some of these veterans from the Box Hill side that have to start stamping their mark on the game as Mitch O'Donnell wants to have a piece of Ivan Marich. Yeah, he'll take on anyone. This uh, He knows that his career is coming to an end. He's trying to extend it one more week. Marich went looking for Lloyd. Beaten by Whitecross, but it slips out of his hands. Mark off to Miles. Tumbles it towards 50. Keeping his feet was Manor. Taken down by Glass and wrapped up. Lloyd tries to flip to the voice of Morris, commits the body, O'Rourke quick hands, Mirror bumped off his kick, got a little bit of distance, flying across was Evans, taken by Whitecross, in fact it's O'Donnell, tries to go down the line, good pressure from Garthwaite, prevents Taya Miles from taking the mark. Had a hot start, Tay Miles, four possessions early but none since, played a bit of AFL late in the season, rounds 20 and 21, two goals against the Tigers in the AFL game back in round 20. Launceston. American Pitonet. Pitonet's 11th hit out. Only finds its way to Markov. Clever little banana forward. The dive from glass into that pond. Manor gathers over the top to release Morris. He'll take on the tackle. Cop one high. And another fight might ensue. Miles will continue things going. Griffiths somehow. The little step later work for Big Ben. Steve Morris still wrestling on the wing from that high shot, but a great grab there from Griffiths. And he adds so much to this Richmond forward line. Not massive on numbers, but contest after contest, he always brings the ball to ground. Very rarely does he get outmarked. Really important goal in the qualifying final from Griffiths. You miss right. Got a bit of a look at the breeze there. That one ripped it savagely from left to right. Look at that from Morris. He's been fully committed so far today. 21 inside 50s to 6. 11 scoring shots to 1. It equals a 40-point lead to the Tigers. So Steve Morris and Harry Morrison going at it. Here's Pitonet. Goes up, takes the mark. The big man has to start exerting his influence on the game. Gives it off to Willsmore. Penetrating left boot, but it's a 2-on-1 for Andrew Moore. Hunt front and centre. Looks for Garthwaite. He's immediately tackled. Menadju. Shepard comes from Bachelor. Menadju's kick pitches just inside the line. Jake Bachelor just playing that Luke Hodge general role at the moment. He's getting to every single contest he can and having a real influence. And How much would they love to have Ty Vickery and Chris Jones, their two key forwards? Jones with a, a fractured cheekbone. Vickery a one-week suspension. This would be killing him to miss a game against the Tigers as Stewart is run down. And the mauling continues. Oleg Markov, what a first quarter he's playing. Now their tackle pressure has been elite so far in this first term. But you're right, Vickery's kicked 27 goals for the year and Jones 22. Just gives them a physical presence up forward, something to kick to, a bailout kick down the line, as you said. That, that's almost 50 goals, plus the number one and two in, in the team for contested marks, as you would expect. So they've just got no one up forward at the moment that they can really aim at. And the longer Moore stands at full forward, that, that's one of their better contested midfield players out of the, the guts. So it's fifth, giving it to second as they finished at the end of the home and away season. Squeeze out on the fall. It'll be a box hill ball. Mitch O'Donnell to take it. Can they get one late? Well, it's a one on two down the line again. Hanrahan tried to make it work, and that sums up the contrasting fortunes. And Chris Newman, the former Tigers captain, needs to try and somehow get his box hill hawks up and about at quarter time. The Tigers' superb 40 points clear. What a start from Richmond. They're 6 5 41. Box Hill one behind when they played last time in round five. Box Hill trailed at half time by a few goals. They're going to have to come from behind again this afternoon. It's Richmond by 40 points at the first change in the preliminary final on 7 VFL finals footy. She'll go forward. So Andrew Moore's gone to. Anthony Miles, as you can see in the foreground, as we start the second term, Richmond by 40 points. Sam Lloyd taking his turn in the middle of the ground. Kicks towards half forward. Box Hill like to control the game from half back. Hams. Hanrahan involved. Here is Moore. Run down again by Morrison. Still can't get a disposal. 
Uh, you love playing with this man. I said it last week. His second efforts, his hardness at the footy, he's inspirational to his teammates. So Morris goes short, too short. Better defensive zone here from Box Hill, forcing Richmond to kick long down the line. Off the hands of Griffiths, pitting it at the back. Needs to be quick with the hands. Hanrahan. Tidy step, found himself some space. Glass under pressure, just has to bang it on the boot. Awkward bounce. Fisher gathers. Can use Walker. This is a better start from Box Hill early in the second term. Walker penetrating kick to the pocket. Surely a holding decision. Play on the call. Tigers benefit, and Bachelor can come away. How many times have we said that so far? And the one hand bounce from Markov. Audacious. Lloyd somehow trapped it. Needs to get it free and does. Miles with Lennon cannonballing into him. Back to Markov, who is everywhere at the moment. Slices the kick wide. Bolton, the live wire, taken out of it by the All Black and heavily. Let's take another look at the other end of the ground. Probably lucky to get away with one here, Beasley. Clearly, target the jumper. Umpire probably... It's good D to not make it definitive. There was no yes. tug of the jumper on Aiden Kennedy. So Griffiths gets to the back. Little squeeze kick from Hams. Another of those Hawks mitts that needs to get busy. Evans, Hanrahan, Fisher went in the no look and it was no good. Bolton commits, went low, dragged it in. Won't be penalised. I've been really impressed with Bolton's hardness at the football early in this quarter. He sat under that high ball on the wing, took a really gutsy mark as Jack Rewalt and most of the Richmond side look on. Jacob Townsend, the listed medalist in that shot as well. Hampson, handball intercepted by Willsmore. Bolton lurking, tries to strip Hanrahan. Look at the pressure from the Tigers. Bolton goes, falls to ground. Fall away handball, picked off by O'Rourke. Tumbles a kick under pressure. As we heard Chris Newman say, just wants to force... Uh, McRae, rather, say, just wants to force Box Hill into blast kicking. Get numbers around the screen. Markov. Menadju tries to stand up through the tackle, gets it to Morris. He's run down. Pitonet slaps it forward. Frenetic passage of play. This Menadju on the bottom of that pack. They're much better from Box Hill then. Dustin Martin watching on. Brandon Ellis over the back. Well, they're all here supporting their teammates. Pitonet to O'Rourke. Now Hams. Morris comes storming through. Menadju to Lloyd. He's got Morris on the outside, uses him. Morris nudged off his kick. Ball goes inside 50. Heavily slick hands to Morrison. Now Mirror. Mirror goes to White Cross. And these are some of the veterans that need to start getting involved for Box Hill. White Cross's kick will bounce to the toes of Brolic. The handball. Oh. Pushed out of it. Hams. After the play had finished. And Will yeah. Hams has had concussion had issues concussion all year. concussion issues this year. Missed a heap of footy. Concussed in round five. Subsequently against Richmond. Again in round seven against Port Melbourne. And basically out until he played... Development League footy in round 18. He's bounced back to his feet, which is a, a great sign. A handy returnee, and in the end, receives the free kick. What can Box Hill muster forward? Hampson presents, pushed to the back, Beasley. Denies them again. Former Brisbane Lion, Hugh Beasley, tries to kick to the advantage of Moore. Went early and infringes. And Will Hams had barely made it away from the scene of the original free. Alicia Reeve, you were down in the huddle at quarter time. What was the message? Yeah, I snuck over to the Box Hill huddle before the Richmond one, and Chris Newman was actually surprisingly calm. He told the players to relax and said they need to get the ball back in their hands, then they can play their footy, and that's when they'll hit the scoreboard. Both the coaches united in their messaging. Craig McRae wants to stop Box Hill doing that. Hampson to Lloyd. Been busy once again in great form. Stengel, a clever mark. Almost went to play on, went to ground. Now he's called to go. Inside 50. Moore comes out. Mira goes back with courage. Spills off the contest. Gathered by Darley. The Richmond skipper lines up. Goes for it and gets it. That was a su superb finish there from Darley. But again, it was... A missed kick coming out of the back half. Connor Glass, the Irishman on this occasion. Vicky Vaughan's happy with it. He's clapping. 
And the real concern for Boxer at the moment is their two talls, Connor Nash and Aiden Kennedy, haven't touched the ball, so they're just not getting anything from their big guys, which isn't bringing the ball to ground to get their small guys involved in the contest. And their number one midfielder, Andrew Moore, still yet to have a disposal as well. And Jacob Ballard, who's yet to have a touch for the Tigers, a luxury given his season, wins the free, sends it inside 50, pin and net. Almost a lone hand at the moment for the Hawks in those, once again, unwashed socks. Mirror's kick chopped off by Stengel. Has to go again, the skipper. And it's just a boot in hope. Short sets himself. Almost juggled the one-hander. Well done, Fisher. Releases Murphy. Here's Box Hill's opportunity. Miles, not much to shoot at. Picks out a target. It's more at the back. Can he get his day going? He can't. And it's not a happy pass players day at the moment for Andrew Moore. No, again, it's just a, a, it wasn't a poor kick, but if the kick had just travelled a little bit further from Miles and hit Moore on the chest, he would have had a set shot rather than having to snap it around the body. So nothing going right for Box Hill at the moment. Hugh Beasley, the former Brisbane Lion. Goes long towards the Goss wing. Ham's in a position against Cal Moore. Spills to Bolton at the back. I kick towards half forward. Mirror camped underneath it. So this is when they can get their game going. The switch is on. It's one of the few switches we've seen so far this afternoon. This is Box Hill football right here. Mirror to Heatherly to Miles. Create some space. Chip it around and retain possession. That's the Box Hill game plan. And this is the first time they've done it all day. Fisher steps inside Bachelor and delivers. As we say, that is Box Hill football right there. Much better. It was a good switch by Dave Mirror on the far side. And they worked it really, really well. So... First mark inside 50 for Box Hill for the game. And they need to really now go back and make the most of this. Connor Nash, the 19-year-old from County Derry from Narvin, about 30 minutes north of Dublin. First rugby spotted, player. Playing Gaelic football at the age of 15. Played under 18 rugby for Ireland. He's kicked two goals, one for the season. He's tucked that one left. It's coming back on the breeze a little. Garthwaite with the defensive spoil towards the line. And Hunt tracks it over with a Ducci for company. Yeah, and he's an interesting international prospect as well. Connor Nash is 197 centimetres. He's got the height. He's played predominantly down back. That's how you learn the game quicker at AFL level. They've thrown him forward purely by necessity. And they'll need to get a couple of goals out of the Irishman. Stewart presented, created the spill. Hanrahan, who's been busy, had his kick smothered. Evans lurking in the back. Lennon slips oh. in. And there's another who hasn't had much. Lennon just one possession. Ballard one possession. Been two of the best players all season. Certainly not having any issues with a couple men down at the moment. The Tigers. Ben Lennon had a superb season. Third in the competition for goals. The big say in the final series as well. Goes towards Ballard. Well done, Morrison. Read it better. Brings it to the corridor. Hanrahan. His ninth possession. What can he engineer? Moore, Nash, Beasley with a fist, Menadieu at the fall. Found himself in the Kennedy tackle. And the Hawks get a look at a Ford 50 stoppage. It's just a small thing, but he body lined the ball there. Menadieu took clean possession. Got tackled, but he gets a stoppage rather than just bobbling that ball out and giving Boxhill a chance inside 50. Boxhill just starting to settle into the game now. It hasn't shown on the scoreboard as yet. But the last three or four minutes has been better, much better. Here's Mirror, throws it on the beat, boot, heads goalward, and now it shows on the scoreboard. The Hawks get there first. Well, it took a captain's goal here, a quarter and ten minutes to finally get a major. He's had 12 disposals across the half-back line. He's trying everything he can to keep his side back in this contest. And then a few more to come along for the ride at the moment because Box will have too many passengers. Just his eighth VFL goal in 127 games. So both captains off half back hitting the scoreboard in this second quarter. Hanrahan, Brett better in flight by Garthwaite. That's just a blast kick, which is what Craig McRae was talking about at quarter time, forcing Box Hill into blast kicks. Beasley wants to bring it in the direction of marriage. Pittenet flew just to put him off. Ravan Marich, who's announced his retirement. Chris Newman, former teammates. Didn't play in the semi-final, Ravan Marich, with Ravan Soldo, of course, taking his place. So if the Tigers get through, it's going to be fascinating to see which way that selection decision goes. Body on body to the front. White cross, and you can see the water come up 
And speaking of the water at ground level, Alicia, some clouds that look like they're closing in on Fort Burn Stadium. Yeah, we could be expecting some wet weather footy soon. You can see the, the, the storm cloud, well, I wouldn't say storm cloud, some rain drifting across. Um, just look to the radar, could just be some light showers though. Let's hope so as Conker receives from short. Looks to switch play. He's got Bachelor versus Brolic. Brolic forces a contest, but just slips high. Bachelor will take the advantage. Runs away from Brolic. Looks for an option. Was going to Ballard. It's cut off by Whitecross. Box Hill working themselves into the game here. They're a long way behind, but they've stabilised the situation. Beasley cuts it off. And for the first time this afternoon, Brownie, we actually have a contest. Yeah, Box Hill have lifted their work rate. There's no doubt about that. Menadju. Takes on O'Donnell, has the speed, pokes it down the line to Hunt. Slips through his fingers, coming hard the other way, Morrison. Morrison's, Box Hill's intensity's lifted. Morrison's been happy to put his body on the line on a few occasions as well in this first quarter, so they just came out really flat. Tigers gave them nothing in that first quarter. They're just starting to work back in this contest now. You can feel Box Hill starting to lift. Really healthy crowd here at North Port Oval. Fort Burn Stadium as Miles has taken high by Pitonet. Marriage comes in to remonstrate with O'Donnell, who came in over the top of Miles. The old bull and the young buck. Anthony Miles, what a season he's had at VFL level. Pumps it high, floats on the breeze. Lloyd, almost the one-hander, it spills out. Challenge for Box Hill now. But they've turned it into an arm wrestle is to start getting things their way on the scoreboard and start putting a bit of pressure on the Tigers. As we've said, the last couple of weeks, Richmond have had healthy leads, but just faded for patches in games. I'm sure that will be the message from Chris Newman as O'Rourke's run down by Ballard. Great tackle. Well, the tackling pressure from Richmond has just been superb right from the very start of this match. Seen plenty of run down tackles. Ballard off to short, who can cover the distance here. He'll hang in the breeze. Mira, well done. Oh, that's a great grab. Standing up as a captain. To be sixth possession of the quarter to go with a goal as well. Heads wide. Kennedy, just it was Nash, in fact, who put the body on and allowed Stewart to slide in and take the mark. He'll go short. And they're plus 12 in uncontested ball at the moment after being minus seven in the opening quarter, so starting to get the game on their terms. White cross, Evan Stewart darting forward, takes the mark. And yeah, that's the best ball movement for the day. Great, strong, contested mark from Mira in the back pocket. All of a sudden, they get their running game going. A smart bit of play as well, coming through the middle of the ground just to turn and kick it into the space. They knew that they had a couple of players, Kate Stewart, one of them, running back into that space to take the uncontested so he's mark. He's a left-footed Kate Stewart, so opportunity to work this one around. He kicked the tying point, of course, here at this venue to this end of the ground. Back in round seven against Port Melbourne. Oh, that's superb execution. And there's a glimmer of hope all of a sudden for the Hawks. Well, this was a terrific ball movement coming through the corridor. Nice, bold football, white cross. And the quick ball movement to Cage Stewart who didn't disappoint. That was a superb finish there in the pocket under pressure. Box Hill, back-to-back -back goals and back in the contest. And winning those uncontested possessions that define their game as Lloyd from the congestion towards half-forward. Brolic versus Ellis lays the tackle. Turnover comes to Hams. Box Hill now starting to get busy. Aducci to O'Rourke. The tide turning at North Port. Inside 50. Off the hands of the contest. Running on it hard was Hanrahan. Couldn't get boot to ball. Bachelor commits the body. Beasley in over the top as well. Fisher fighting hard for Box Hill. Uncontested possessions this term. 30 to 16 in favour of Box Hill. When they win that number, they play their best for well, They're getting their running game going now. And their ball delivery inside 450 is really, really quickly. They need to... They're going to have to have to take all those opportunities, those half chances like the Cage Stewart goal if they are to get back in this contest. Markov, quick kick back towards the middle, heavily steams out, leaves Griffiths to the ball, hoists it high inside 50, tall timber from all directions, off the hands Murphy almost ran onto it, it's there for Fisher, went to get it to Miles good strong tackle, laid by Garthwaite and Conker They did well not to infringe there both those Richard players, good strong tackle Absolutely hammered Aducci 
Good umpiring, letting it go. So Box Hill, can they capitalise again? Ballard's clearing kick will only work its way to Nick Evans, who steadies. The kick works its way on the breeze. Miles run over the top by his fellow 42 and Garthwaite in the end, and it'll be slow to get up. It was a smart kick as well. He pulled the kick. Not sure if he was actually going for Miles there, but... Margin was 40 at quarter time. They've taken a small bite out of it here, the Hawks. O'Donnell loves the contested situation. Markov eventually to Ballard, who miss hits the kick. Unrichmond like from a finals perspective, footy. Well, they're under pressure now in their back 50, just throwing the ball on the boot. Jordan Walker's going to kick to a congested forward line. Hampson. You love seeing your big, tall Ruckman on the last line, getting back and helping out his defenders, taking big marks like that. He's got Griffith setting himself down the line. Lennon will take the front spot, and Bolton. Well, we saw him take an absolute hanger on the siren last week. Slides in and provides further relief for the Tigers. What an exciting prospect he is at the age of 18. High kick holds in the breeze. Walker flies against Griffiths. Spills to Lloyd. Inboard to Ballard. Tracks a crowd, gives it over the top to Markov, who turns it over. Picked off by Evans, wants to get it and go to Hanrahan. Thought about the give to O'Rourke, loses his feet. Got to get rid of it quickly. Walker, now Mirror. He shanks the kick forward. They've got some numbers. Evans, under pressure, gives it off to O'Donnell. Pressure kick inside 50. Garthwaite cuts it off. Handball too much enough for Bachelor. Gathered by Fisher. Floats a handball over the top. Over the top to Miles, to Murphy. And the Hawks get another. Ollie Hanrahan hobbles off after this incident with Batchelor. Got a kick he looks right like in the thigh or the inside of the knee. He's hobbled off. He'll be a bit sore, but a, a fantastic work at ground level there from the Box Hill Smalls. Finally getting involved. Murphy, who's been a little goal sneak all year, bobbing up and kicking another goal for Box Hill. And as we've seen throughout the final series, teams having run-ons. Richmond with the first seven. The Hawks with the last three. And a bit of a breeze advantage as well. Some clouds rolling around Port Melbourne. At least a couple of goals advantage to the right of screen to which Box Hill kick. Pittenet. Evans. Body work from Stewart caught at the back and in the end forced to infringe on Garthwaite. He's been solid down there, Garthwaite. Playing his 20th VFL game of the season. He's got to find a way to bring that ball to ground without infringing these Box Hill forwards. They need the ball on the ground because of Ducci and Murphy. Some of the smalls need to start getting involved in this game. Daly off the line. Markov being superb and likes his chances to dash around Brolic. The kick will find its way to Manor. He wants to move it. This kick will also hold in the breeze. Hampson will set himself again, taken high. Almost no choice in the end for Max Warren. Hampson off the line for Conker. Assesses his options. You can see Sam Daly, the square up if he wants it. Conker will go longer and deeper. Child from three deep, forced to spoil. It's a pretty smart kick in the end. Just long to the pocket where you can get a contest. You can lock the ball inside your forward 50 with a stoppage here rather than kick it to the top of the square and potentially get Box Hill the switch if they win it on the far side. Hit a net against Chol. Hit a net gets it down to White Cross. Awkward bounce for Murphy. Coming it hard was Hampson. Murphy goes back, wins the football. Handball floats to Menadju. He's run down. Gives it off to Batchelor. Batchelor pokes it to Markov. 16th touch coming up for Markov. Goes to the pocket for more. What a half Oleg Markov's played. He's been dashing, hasn't he? Every time he's got the ball, he's across the half-back line. He's hit the ground running. He's taken off. He's had bounced. He's used the ball well. Another... Smart decision going forward. So an important steadying goal here for Richmond after Box Hill have kicked the last three. Kelmore kicked a goal in the opening term. And now he's got two. Magnificent finish.
They started to get a bit of a run on Box Hill. Three unanswered goals. This was an important stage of the first half. Moore just backed himself in, hit it beautifully, and went straight through the middle for his second goal. He's got two goals for the third time this VFL season. Marrick tried to work into Hunt. Stewart put it into the path of Lennon. Kate Stewart, he's a tackling machine. Averaging six a game, including 13 against Werribee back in round 14. One of the Hawks trying to turn the tide here. The margin's manageable. Wouldn't want it to expand back out to the 40 it was at quarter time, but they've done some work here, the Hawks. Stengel tried to tap it to Markov, who was held onto for far too long by Fisher. A silly infringement. No advantage for Sam Lloyd, so the ball will come back despite Griffith's mark down the line. So Oleg Markov, 16 possessions already. Having an excellent game so far. Ducci with the tackle. Markov off the line for short. Sends it deep. Tiger Tall set themselves of our marriage. Well, that's far too easy. The big man almost uncontested in the end. There were all the Box Hill defenders around him and no one flew and killed that ball in the air. Inexcusable. Just two VFL goals this year for Ivan Marich. Nine in his 31. Four or five VFL Box Hill players just standing there flat-footed waiting for someone else to make the contest. Go and do it yourself. And there'll be a rush to Big Ivy if he salutes and he does. And that's a big steadier for the Tigers nearing halftime. She found the man she loves. I only lose my mind when I ain't got you. I almost lost you. Is she about to lose him again? Shouldn't have even got back together. Oh, I love you. And I love you too. Then what is the problem here? Kiss I ain't got you. And you will find out who the father is. Oh my God. There's no other family show like 800 Words. Tuesday on 7. Rain just starting to fall here. Have a look at Big Ivan Marriage. Every single Richmond player on the ground, including the defenders, get up to him. All celebrating. That's how tight knit this Richmond side is at the moment. They can see they're building something special. A couple of critical goals to stabilise the situation again for Richmond. Out to 39 points as rain starts to fall here. White cross to Walker. Box Hill have to do it all again now. Evans run down by Menadju. It affected the kick. Pitches over the head of Batchelor, who's taken to the line strongly by Fisher as we head down to Alicia Reba. Well, boys, the wind seems to have swirled around, and with that came some showers, so expect a bit of a scrap here for the rest of this second quarter. A view from Campbell Brown's penthouse in the Docklands. <laughs> it's too windy at the Docklands. I would never live there. Who said you live there? It's just an investment property. <laughs> Kick inside 50 from Warren. Diving effort from Stewart. Spins through one tackle, taken down by Alice. Darley holding the football. Alice will get the free kick. On towards the wing, Moore sits himself. Warren for company. Warren does enough to get it to ground, but Moore wins it. Ballard, look out. Brolet came hard. Dished off the handball to Markov. Thumps it forward. Stengel forces a contest. Morris front and centre. Gives it over the top to Lennon. Backtracking. Taken to the line by Dave Mirror. And the umpire says holding the football. He's doing everything in his power, Dave Mirror, at the moment as captain to keep his footy club season still alive. 26 and a half minutes gone. 39 points the margin. Marich at the front against Pittanet. Conker. Quick hands, dishes to Miles. Chance for the Tigers to go forward again. Couple of defenders in the way for Box Hill. It spills off hands. Mirror can use Walker. Walker scrubs a kick. Morris is there to cut it off. Richmond with a couple of numbers. Menadju links up with Morris. Back to Menadju. 55 from goal. Looks for an option over the head of Griffiths. Box Hill living dangerously. Will Ham storming off half back. Yeah, it did well. Sends the kick forward. Wills Moore. It's the wait for. Box Hill to form forward of the ball. Trots off onto his left. It's Fisher presenting. Ellis at the fall. Darley. And Corey Ellis, I think, dealt with off the ball by Kate Stewart. 
So what was going to be a fast retreat from defence will come back and Corey Ellis will try and steady things up for the Tigers. Three goals apiece in this third quarter so far. Corey Ellis, seven touches so far this afternoon. Pulled votes in his last five games, Alice. Again, it just shows how strongly they're going at AFL level that he can't break into that side. Averaging 20 touches a game, been in their best players nine times this year. Boy from Keelor and the Western Jets. Pitonet to the front. O'Donnell paddling and not able to keep it alive. I think Damien Hartwick, if there was an injury or two in the next week or so for Richmond, would be really confident bringing in five or six players. You could easily bring in Conker, Lloyd, Batchelor, Bolton, uh, you know, Corey Ellis. Well, there's literally an option for everything they need in that AFL team, from small forwards to talls and ruckman like yep. marriage. Through the feet of Ellis, Billy Murphy, scrapping for it, Ellis winning the day. And that's what wins your big games and finals is depth. You can hear the voice off the bench. Keep it in, keep it in. Richmond's bench involved in this play. With footy clubs, when everything is going well and you're winning, everyone's positive and up and about. It's one of the best places in the world to be involved in. You can say quite the opposite when things aren't going great as well. Ellis off a step. Out of bounds on the full chance for Box Hill. Late in this second term. You just get the feeling, though, all the, the players are playing with such energy. They're all so happy. It's coming out in their footy. Kennedy stepped around a man and finishes with a magnificent goal. Well, that was a big finish there from Kennedy, who's had a quiet day so far today. That is his first disposal. The big man, 192 centimetres, hit it from outside 50 and kicks Box Hill's fourth for the quarter and a much needed one going into half time. His first goal of the season, spends most of his time in the back line. Had a knee reconstruction in 2011, had another one after the preliminary final in 2014, took a game saving mark that saw Box Hill get through to the grand final, but it cost him an ACL. A good agility there from the big man as well, just to sell some candy, step around one and the finish with the wet ball now was, uh, was superb. He's the forward option at the moment for Box Hill. Was drafted as a forward from the Eastern Rangers. Had a couple of years on North Melbourne's list. Hit a net over the top for Miles. Bounce its way to Bolton, who tries to fumble it forward. Morris taking no chances. Toes it off the ground. And again, clatters into a couple. Menadju trying to do the dry weather work. Lost it. Mirror. A handle and hope for Darley. Murphy. Manage you again, an air swing from Morris. He's just involved in everything that's hard and aggressive at the moment. He actually accelerates into <laughs> another human being. He nearly killed Corey Maynard on two occasions last Saturday, didn't he? Are you guys spirit animals? <laughs> you, you very rarely see modern day footballers play the way he plays, so it just stands out like a beacon. At 7VFL on Twitter or Facebook, if you've got any questions or want some comments from Brownie. Mira set himself here, as has Griffiths. Ball to the fall. Eventually it's Hunt. Back to Dali. He's already got one in this term. The kick to the top of the square. Markov. Brolic. Markov again. Keeps it alive. Stengel trying somehow to get free. Got boots a ball, but just wasn't pointing in the direction of the goals. And Tyson Stengel coming off an electric four goals last week in the semi-finals. Been quieter so far today, just the five positions. And big Benny Griffiths just hobbling a bit from that big contest at the top of the square there. He is proppy, so Alicia will no doubt be all over that. Long kick out. Conquer at the back. Bachelor in there working hard as well. He's had a great first half. Beasley slick hands to Ballard. Murphy runs him down. Much better second term from Box Hill. They've only closed the gap by goal, but been much more competitive. Got themselves back in the contest. And at halftime, the margin 34 points. It's very much advantage Richmond, but Box Hill will go to the half knowing that they're at least back in the contest. It's Richmond 9660, Box Hill Force 226. Final. Box Hill have got other ideas as we start the third term. It's the Tigers by 34 points. Here's Nigel Carmody to get us underway. Cal Moore, the only man with multiple goals on the ground so far. Tigers with the first seven of the matches. Lloyd sends it forward to Troll, who's been a good move. Lennon, Griffiths, caught behind on heavily. The ball eventually works its way to him, and the Kiwi combines with the Irishman. Connor Glass, kick hangs, and Lloyd reads it best and can well and truly cover the distance from here, Sam Lloyd. 
kick to goal. With the 12-minute mark of the opening quarter in what was a six-goal run. Richmond led by 40 points at quarter time. Sam Lloyd has 16 possessions already on the afternoon. High fly again from Bolton. Somehow works its way forward. Hanson goals, and it's all about the Tigers. Well, seven days after heading skyward on the final side against Casey, Bolton already almost another amazing mark, and it was Marbiel Troll, the inventive flick through the legs that gifted that goal to Hampson, margin back to what it was at quarter time. And back out to 40 points. White cross, spins for a tackle. Lloyd slaps it away. Menadju gathers, gives it to Taylor Hunt. High ball towards the forward 50. Glass, Warren. And now Miles stands underneath it. Taylor Miles looks for an option downfield. Darley in best position for the Tigers. Craig Stewart looks back as if to say, well, who was that kick to? Conker receives the handball, kicks towards half forward. Griffiths elects to fist it on cleverly. Hampson runs on it, wants to take on the tackle of it, drop the football. Here's the dangerous Bolton. He loses the handle as well. Glass to Pittanet. Heavily flips it over the top to Morrison. He looks for Murphy, but puts it over and out. Just looks to me like there's been a bit of a disconnect between the Box Hill mids and their forward entries. On occasions today, that kick by Miles, just a little chip kick over the top. Not really to anyone, easily picked off by Darley. Well, as we said, their usual hit up targets, Vickery and Jones not in the team. Vickery suspended Jones with a fractured cheekbone. So it is a very different look when you're streaming through the middle and looking up those guys not there. They've tried to put together a bit of a piecemeal forward line. Miles' kick, high up and under, taken by Morris. He's dragged down off his kick. Markov in from the side, gets the fist away from Hanrahan, then wins it at ground level. Was taken down by O'Rourke. Hanrahan, who we saw just hobble off uh, halfway through that second quarter with the kick to the inside of his leg. He seems to be OK. He uh, got it worked on at half time, and he's OK to play the game out. Conker flipped a boot at it, goes in for another dose with Mitch O'Donnell caught at the base of the pack. Mitch O'Donnell... Just his seventh VFL game of the season. Had a dirt bike incident in February. Required shoulder surgery. Didn't get back into the development league team until mid-July. Is he still riding dirt bikes? Probably not if Chris Newman has anything to do with it. As O'Rourke tried to send it forward. It was lost by Markov. Found by Morrison. Stewart works his way through traffic. Claimed by Markov. And the Tigers once again will get ball in hand. 46 tackles to 37 the way of the Tigers. So only three possessions for Stewart today. One from Andrew Moore, their prime ball movement. Richmond, Seven from O'Rourke as well. Richmond have done a great job of just shutting down the engine room of Fox Hill. Beasley. Receives some heavy contact from Kennedy, but delivers back to Markov, who's been outstanding. 20th touch for Oleg Markov. Make it 21 as he hoists it high towards half forward. Glass couldn't take it. Bolton at the back lurking. Gives off the handball to Ballard. He flips over the top to Stengel. It's Tiger time. Well, Sting Stengel was the man that set the tone early with that great run down and chase and tackle in the first quarter. It's been quiet again today. Connor Glass has had the job on him, but nothing can stop him when he gets goal side. Pittenet dashed it towards White Cross, tried to find the lookaway hand pass and not able to get it to O'Rourke as Ballard. They work him over and can't get him to ground. A quiet day for Jacob Ballard, just the eight possession so far. And Chris Newman's going to be almost down to his wedding ring. The nails are getting that much of a working over at the moment. O'Rourke to White Cross, trying to go the top. Kick smothered. Sneaks its way through to Pittenet. Kick comes forward, not to the advantage of Kennedy, which allows Beasley to try and get the release handball. Ellis paddles it outside defensive 50, goes again, strong body contact with Aducci. Darley works his way around, but kicks Mother off the boot. And Richmond, time and time again, have just been prepared to let Box Hill know all about it today. They've got the game on their terms, yeah, and they're loving it. They've certainly been the more aggressive side of the two, this Richmond team. And Beasley just continues to impress every time I see him with his body work, his positioning. Very measly defender. Measly Beasley. 
<laughs> Menadju wrapped up by White Cross. A rocking over the top in the small package. Easy guys. Go high, don't go high. Again, the niggle continues. No love loss between these two teams. Hampson and Pittenet. Roller quick hands to O'Rourke. Sets more a task. Flying in over the top was Fisher to cause a contest. Miles at ground level to tidy it up to Bachelor. He misses the body of Short. Puts him under a little bit of pressure. Paddles to his own advantage, then dishes to Alice. Alice to Hunt. He keeps it moving. Glass stands tall, and the Tigers move at 70 metres just with body pressure around the football. As we take you around the grounds, VFL women's preliminary final. Darabin and St Kilda. And the Falcons have found a way. They are through to the grand final next week against Diamond Creek. You'll see that game live on 7 from 11 o'clock, the pregame show with Nigel Carmody. It's going to be Diamond Creek and the Darabin Falcons, the two standout teams from 2017. Hunt across the body, picked off by Will Hams. The former Bombers going to retreat. Chole tracks the ball heavily. The fair catch. Takes on Chole. Dumped in the tackle. Back to the skipper and mirror. Cool heads prevail. Out to walk out. Bolton and Chole in hot pursuit. Kick sizzles its way to Nash. And the Irishman before Miles is on the scene. Goes in the direction of Fisher. Strong contest with Short. Who might have caught one in the stomach there. We'll keep an eye on his condition. Ballard eventually taken to ground. Jaden Short, that was a strong contest with Fisher and Alicia Eva. Ground level, what's your update? Well, the Richmond forwards did exactly what they were told then, put pressure on that switch kick coming outside of their forward 50. Craig McRae would be very pleased with those efforts. Tigers get the free kick. Anthony Miles on the bottom of that pack. Received the high contact. Gives it off to Darley. Short to Ballard. Has to try and step around the tackle. Good pressure from Cade Stewart. Here comes Jaden Short looking sore. So Cade Stewart has it in the middle of the ground. High ball inside 50, but to no one in particular, and Markov just cuts it off. That's that disconnect I was talking about just earlier, only five or so minutes ago. Kick inside 450 to absolutely no one. Markov having a picnic down there today. 22 touches for him, Bolton. Pops one high. The eagle continues. There's hardly been a ball on the ground today when this hasn't happened. And they're in front on the free kick count, Richmond, because they've been first to the football going lower and harder. And earned their free kicks today. Massive crowd here at Northport. Great to see them turn out in number. Plenty of Tiger fans, plenty of Hawks fans as well. Griffiths. Spoiled to the front, bell out of fumble, taken by Lennon. Looks to square it up, Conker flips it to Hunt. And I've got another free kick for high contact. Darley took the advantage, it didn't turn out to be much. Ellis, back to Darley, thinks about the give to Lennon, goes now. Lennon, forced onto his left boot, brings it back inboard. Big spoil to the front for Lennon, wrapped up immediately by Evans, got the hands free, Stengel, clever little kick to Darley. Tigers keep it moving. Bolton sets himself again. He's got some tall timber to deal with. Was held when not in possession. Hands run down. Good pressure again from the Tigers. Hampson tries to keep it moving. Fisher has a fumble. Walker's taken down. Hampson lurks, wins the football, tries to get it to Menadju. It's called a throw. It's called a throw, but outstanding pressure from Richmond on that occasion. Could have been awarded a couple of free kicks there. The, the hold on Bolton and the holding the ball on Hams could have been there, but that's the pressure that'll take you all the way into a grand final. Aiden Kennedy oh. tries to go around Beasley, lost the handle on it. Morris to Beasley, has to think his way through it, takes on O'Donnell, kick forward, Lennon in space marks, can steady, and just about put Richmond into the last Sunday that counts in the VFL. Well, rule number one when selling the dummy is hang on to the football. <laughs> yeah, terrible place on the ground to turn the ball over. And all the Box Hill defenders were offside. Benny Kennedy strolls in. The ben Benny Lennon strolls in and kicks his 43rd goal of the year. And did he like it? Aiden Kennedy with the fumble. Andrew Moore out towards Brolick at half forward. Not on the same page as Aducci. Handball went straight past him. Alice and Menadju work it out together. 
Ellis gives it to Minaju, can go for a run. Can pop a handball over the top to Hunt. He runs to 50. Penetrating kick towards the top of the square is picked off. Jordan Walker in best position for the Hawks. He delivers to Morrison. Morrison to Fisher, who's attacked everything with gusto this afternoon. He now attacks Ballard the same way. Slams him into the turf. Passing over the top. Look at the closing speed then of Jake Batchelor. Look for all money that they were going to take an uncontested mark through the corridor. And Batchelor just willed himself to get to that contest and force the ball to ground. Marriage with Bulk just works Pitniff off the line of the ball as Moore continues to wrestle this time with Taylor Hunt. Ball still alive for White Cross. Hits it on the wrong side of his boot. Emphatic fist forward by Connor Glass. Batchelor gets on the end of it. Uses the support. It's Markov. He floats one inside 50. Lennon in from the side. Off the hands of Chol. Mar Mira had to be quick. Bolton lays a shepherd. Opens the door for Stengel. Steps a man. Gives it off to Manor. Who snaps another one. Sean Manor, the 20-year-old from Walla Walla up Albury Way. His dad, Craig, almost died on the field in 2013. He was knocked out. He was 42 years old, pulled on the boots as a playing coach. Sean, this is a measure of his character, was best on the ground the next week and won the club's best and fairest in the seniors at the age of 15 that year as a tribute to his dad. Now he's on the score sheet for the Tigers this afternoon and they look headed for a grand final. He's a pretty handy 23rd man. Two goals last week. Courage required here from all comers at the fall. It's Hams. Pushes, he kicked, works its way forward. Fisher taken out of it. Beasley has a cursory glance and Willsmore runs out of turf. Not only is this a very good Richmond side, but I, I said it a few times last week as well, just how unselfish they are as well. They continually give the ball to players in better positions. Stengel's the man that gave the handball on that occasion to Manor, and they get everyone involved. Connor Nash doing the forward line ruck work. Aducci, Willsmore, lost the handle on it, collected high by Manor. Twelve individual goal kickers today for Richmond. Only the one player has got the multiple goals, and Cal Moore. that's Moore. And it's a very hard team to defend when everyone's just chiming in. So Dallas Willsmore handed... And you've done it again. Let's go. I warned you. So Taylor Hunt, the man to infringe... Dallas Woodsmore can head to football's version of the charity strike Kick for his 15th goal of the season. And the Hawks break a run of four straight Tiger goals in this third quarter. Chris Newman watches on. Box Hill Hawks coach, former Richmond captain. The Tigers by 52 points as we approach time on in the third term. Hitting it against Marich. Hitting it gets the tap. Lloyd tracks it at ground level. Morris gets there first. Aducci lays a tackle on Menadju. Ball spills to Glass. Hanrahan. Now Evans from half back towards Nash. Clever little kick from the Irishman. Kept it alive. Wins the football back but coughs it up to Miles. Short off half back, manufactures a little chip kick. It's effective and it finds Kel Moore. Moore goes laterally, he's got a man in space. Ellis had to stand and wait as Headley came thundering in. Headley saying, Well, what was that free kick for? Yeah, he's got a fair case to it. Argue there, Kurt Headley. Miles to Garthwaite. He's got a man and draws Nash to release short. High ball inside 50. Griffith sets himself. Almost clunks the grab. Stengel front and centre. Can't slip the more tackle. Gives it off to Chol. He pops a handball over the top to Alice. And the Tigers respond. And a quick reply from Richmond. Great contest from Griffiths. And the front and square from Stengel was superb. He hit that pack at pace. Got the handball over the top to Alice. And they answer right back. Exciting times for the Tigers. You look at the smalls they've got in their AFL team right oh, now. Yeah. And then you've got Bolton and Stengel to give them plenty of excitement in the years to come. A plethora of small forwards. A veritable smorgasbord. 13 goal kickers now for the Tigers. Lloyd to Griffiths. Trying to find the handle on it. Moore assessing his options. Works its way forward. Child carves a path. Menadju. Time to fumble and gather and tackled strongly though. Heavily had him in his sights. 
He loves the aggressive side of the game, Kurt Heatherly. But it is a danger that Richmond players are finding themselves forward of the ball so easily. Alice before kicked the open goal. If Minaju had have picked that ball up cleanly, he probably would have strolled in and kicked another. Moore, the flip tap. Strong tackle from Lloyd. Miles gathers, wrapped up by a couple of hawks. It comes free for Alice. Back to Lennon. Darley, kick around the body and will cough it up to his fellow captain in Mirror. He's been their best player today. Dave Mirror, the captain, really stood up. A Rourke's kick and Morris comes thundering in. Late on Evans. Just look at the way he's still manning the mark here deep into this third quarter. He's just so intense in everything he does. And ultimately it forces players into making errors. Sam Lloyd, the beneficiary. He uses Conker. Called to go. Off his line. Ships it short. Menadju worked hard to get there. That's one way to measure a player and how switched on he is, is how he mans the mark right throughout the course of the game where fatigue kicks in. Energy from 55 out. Heatherly versus Chol. Again, the Tigers front and centre. Smothered off the boot of Miles. Tap back from Hanrahan to Mirror. High ball. Tigers underneath it again. This is Garthwaite. He squares it to Lloyd. And Hugh Beasley next in line as they make the switch. Beasley to short. He's got Darley over the top. Or he can bring it inboard. On the half volley to Miles, who then pops it out to Darley. He's got a man forward of the footy as well. Tigers toying with them right now. This is Ellis. Wheels and goes to a contest inside 50. And that is a wonderful mark taken by Will Hams. Outstanding grab. Such a courageous player, Will Hams. Grew up a Tiger fan. Matthew Knights was his hero. Oh, that, that's his gutsy mark running back with the flight, as you'll see. Kennedy cuts the kick to Mirror. His sixth mark in his 22nd possession over the head of Murphy. Hanrahan tapped it to Murphy. He lost the footing. Hanrahan loses the ball and is thrown out of it by Alice. Too strong, too good. Short. Miles. Kick squeeze wide to Stengel. He's got options of plenty for the ball. He'll try and draw Mirror. Kick over the top. Wanted Chol to lead into that space and Cal Moore appealing for the kick to come his way. Richmond have been far too skillful with ball in hand, far too tough around the ground and quite frankly there's been too many Box Hill players left wanting today in the big stage that have not stepped up. And so the Tiger Army representing at Fort Burn Stadium here this afternoon and their fun September continues. Beasley's kick works inside to Ballard. Just keep finding the options when they're required. See Corey Ellis just off to the right of shot there. A little bit slow to get up. Ballard now called to go. And his kick is an absolute treat for Lennon. Well, it's a slow play. There's nearly every Box Hill player on the ground in their defensive 50. How does a guy like Lennon find so much space to take an uncontested mark? Shouldn't happen. He's already kicked one in this quarter, Ben Lennon. So Kate Stewart kick a goal from the Hawks from a similar spot in the second. This time on the right foot, not able to work it back. So margin working its way close to 10 goals as Ellis off for a spell to dust himself off. Short ball back into play, taken by Max Warren. And now goes to Hams. And short to Andrew Moore. He chips on the bounce to Aducci. Steps around Miles. Looks for an option and ships short to Mira. Mira's got the man cruising past. White cross. Floats a handball to Aducci who kept running. Under pressure. Taken down by Stengel. Gives it to Heatherly. Tries to step Menadju. Back to Aducci. High kick off the side of his boot. Conker underneath. It's got to stand and wait. Stewart arrives late. Conker hangs onto the mark. Another experienced player consolidating this Richmond VFL lineup, Reese Conker. Happy to take some ground with a kick here. And Andrew Moore has had a tough day against his former club. Just three possessions so far. The VFL rep and Team of the Year member. Hampson set himself again. How often have we seen that today? Well, 
they got an injection of three or four really experienced guys just in round 18 or 19 leading into this final series. Hampson was one of them who hardly played a game with those back issues. Conker as well, and they got and they also got um, Griffiths. Griffiths back as well up forward. So three really important players. And they've been superb through this final series. And Steve Morris, who missed seven weeks with a hamstring. Not to mention, they've already got the fabric. Guys like Sam Daly, so experienced at the level. Jake Batchelor, his 19th VFL game of the season today. Not to mention 84 at AFL level as well for the former Danny Nong Stingray. Well, Sean Hampson will not be denied any touches at the moment. Menadju spins through a couple. Getting better as this final series lengthens. Sends it wide, more. Freak can go the Hawks way and Andrew Moore to get a couple of touches in a minute. So his fifth touch. To put that in perspective, he's averaging 24 a game this season. Tigers have spent plenty of time on him this afternoon and it's worked. Nash. Again, they go inside 50, but again, the Tigers will cut it off. Bachelor. Their, their delivery inside their forward 50 today, it's in particular in this third quarter, has been really poor. They haven't been attacking the face of the goal. It's always been to the pocket and it's been to no one in particular. Minajuda to Moore, who looks to fend off and does, spins away from Morrison. Will have a bounce on the wet turf, draws a man, pops the handball over the top to Stengel. Stengel inside 50, Lennon sets himself, good fist from Warren. Front and centre again, the Tigers. This is Chol, little handball off, Moore kept going, and that is a brilliant team goal from the Tigers. A great inside 50 entry there, nice and quick as we've seen all day, but the ball came to ground and their smalls just stream in with so much confidence when the ball hits the ground. On this occasion it was Moore who's done some good things in the air and now on the ground for his third goal. They're having a big final series, three in the elimination final win over Collingwood as Stengel tried to come off the back of the square. Works its way eventually to Conquer who took on O'Donnell. Morris sends it forward, Troll perhaps being hold, Mirror. Ball to the back, glass under siege. Wide for Evans, overran it. Outnumbered, outgunned. Lennon squeezes the kick back. Where's the tall timber? Hampson again. Couldn't mark. Pitonet, Walker, White cross. Wide for Kennedy. Manages to keep it in. Tiger fans think it's out. Boundary umpire agrees. Well, the, the ease in which the Richmond players have been able to break tackles as well in the last five or so minutes is a real concern. They're the Richmond goal kickers today, so they continue just to really spread. Yeah, they share their turn in front of goal. And that unselfish play is largely born out of the fact that they know it'll come back the individual's way at some point as well. Six goals to one in the quarter. Ballard, kick intercepted by Hams, who puts it into the path of Evans, who's working hard off half-back. Runs away from Lennon, goes to Fisher. Bachelor will arrive, force a contest. Murphy lurking, won't sit for him. Fisher keeps it alive, looks for a target and finds Pittenet, 48 from home. Mark Pittenet. Two goals, five for the season. This is 50th VFL game this afternoon. Hugh Beasley down behind the play for the Tigers, just catching his breath. So Pittenet from directly in front gets underneath it, right to the line. Marich and Moore spills off the hands of that contest for a minor score. And there is Hugh Beasley, up and about. Enjoyed a great first year after coming off the Brisbane Lions list. Played six AFL games in 2015, had back and knee problems last year, didn't get any senior games in, was cut by the Lions at the end of the season, came back to Victoria. Product originally of the Q Comets. He's played 19 games this year and been a really important part of this Richmond VFL campaign. Ben Lennon's having a huge third quarter to Menadju, to Ballard. He's got Hampson over the top. He'll go there by hand. Eventually, it's gathered by Big Sean. Kick out of the water. Big body spoil in the end, attempted by Stengel. will give the Hawks back to Sharon. So Harry Morrison will take the free. Kick wide, and you can hear the slap of that wet footy into the hands of Nick Evans. On the stretch, it's Warren. Another quiet hawk this afternoon. Just his seventh touch coming up. 
hitting it, set himself down the line, taking the front spot, Beasley. He's been a superb attacking defender in this final series. Lennon's kick wide and too much on it for Stingle. He very rarely loses one-on-one -on -one contest, Beasley. We, we did see in that first oh, God, final when he was playing very undersized on Mason Cox. Got him a couple of times in the air, but in the second half, he neutralised Mason Cox. He was brilliant again last week and today. He's been superb. Stewart to Brolic. Brolic puts it out in front of Andrew Moore, who goes to ground. Hunt wraps up the football. Bachelor in there as well. And you spoke of confidence, Brownie. It's an amazing thing around a footy club, isn't it? The, the VFL and AFL teams are just feeding off each other. The feeling at training's great. Everyone's running on top of the ground. Everyone's getting a game, playing good footy. There's, there's no surprise that when your AFL side is up and about playing finals, it certainly impacts your VFL side. And the Tigers are rolling on through September. They will turn for home in the preliminary final with a commanding 64-point lead. Roll. Final term of the preliminary final. Richmond by 64 points. Ivan Marich in the ruck against Pittanet. Miles gets first hands on the football. Shrugs O'Rourke, gets a handball away. It's taken by Evans, who gives it to Morrison. Now to Glass. Glass hits up Brolic on the wing. But chips down the line to O'Rourke. Just hasn't been able to exert his usual influence. 14th possession coming up for John O'Rourke today. 30 possessions in the qualifying final. Andrew Moore gets involved. Puts it into the path of Hanrahan. Sets him a task. Bachelor coming the other way. This is where, as a player, you never like to admit this, but when you're up by so much at three-quarter time, leading into a grand final, potentially, you just start to play within yourself a little bit. You don't want to get rubbed out by doing something fraction late, and you certainly don't want to get injured, so... Expect the heat to go right out of this contest. Hams was pushed out of it. Marich, Lloyd for Whitecross was on the scene. Handball forward for Manor. Kicked that important goal in the third quarter. Lennon, who had a massive third quarter himself. And eventually the chain of handballs. They're nearly out. Single acrobatic. Chol, he's out of harm's way. There's a man on his own by about 50 metres inside Ford 50. It's Ballard. It finally gets there. He gathers and he'll dash home. The Tigers have topped the ton again. How did Stingle do that? Oh, that, that, that was unbelievable by Stingle. I don't know if he got a handball to that or just threw it over his shoulder, but they got the overlap. Maybe a shoulder into Ballard, who ran in and kicked another goal. So 70-point margin here. We certainly didn't see this coming at the start of the day. No signs of the Tigers letting up. O'Rourke to Hanrahan. Bachelor in best position. He's got Manor breaking for him at halfback. It's a live as well. Richmond's ball use has been exceptional today, given the slippery conditions early. The ground looks great on TV, but it's actually reasonably heavy and slippery underfoot as the ball goes over and out. Alicia Reeve, you were in the Richmond huddle at three-quarter time with Craig McRae. What was his message regarding hunger? Well... Uh very happy in, in the Richmond huddle at three-quarter time. The pressure in that third quarter was immense. Now it's a foot-on-throat mentality. They want to put the Box Hill Hawks away. 70 points the margin. Marich the tap. O'Rourke gets hands on the football, but immediately has one-armed pinned by Anthony Miles. One thing that Richmond players across the board are doing really, really well today are all the one percenters. They're spoiling when they're behind. They're not coughing the ball up in stoppages. They're manning the mark. Well, all those little things have big ramifications and they're doing them superbly. Hams, Hunts, Miles, who gives it to Lloyd. He slips away from Brolic and delivers back to Miles to the run of Markov. He's putting himself back on the AFL radar in no uncertain terms. The give and go with Dali. Long ball inside 50 off the hands of the contest from, contest from Ballard. And Lennon runs his man down. Nick Evans. And Ben Lennon can go back and kick his second. Their pressure has been irresistible. They're frenetic right from the very start and has continued all the way through this contest. Ben Lennon for his 44th goal of the season. Just a few weeks with a hamstring mid-year. But he doesn't miss that. 
It's been a wonderful team contribution from the Tigers. It certainly has across the board. And even if you look down the numbers, guys like Manor, Garthwaite, Marricks and Griffith, who have had low numbers, have really made an impact in this contest. They've really contributed as well, even though it's been without the ball on occasions. A content and pensive club captain, Trent Cotchin, looking on, dreaming, perhaps thinking about emulating this effort next Saturday at the MCG. Their opponent, GWS and West Coast, determined tonight. You'll see that, of course, live here on 7, the kick from 6.30. O'Rourke taken out of it. Short, what did Morris? Nice work from O'Donnell to send the Hawks forward. Bachelor with a strong fist. Mirror's been moved into attack. Willsmore handed it off. And Rahan lost it. Goes back to Hams. And the don't argue, not working it. Dive from Manor. Strong pressure from Miles. Oh, look and at the again, pressure. this is amazing. And this is a side that's up by 76 points. And the free kick against the Tigers fans, clearly the dominant voice in the back will go the way of Will Hams, but it's what still, a surge of pressure. It's almost like rugby league. Yeah, it was, it was you know, the second, third effort from Manor as well. He gets up, he lays another tackle, and that is a very questionable free kick to Hams. But what about the intent there from the Tigers, boys? Hams called to go. Has he got anything forward? Pittenet got a little bit of separation on marriage and Mark Pittenet, he's battled admirably in the ruck today. Had 31 hitouts, 12 to advantage, so he's given his midfield at grand level an opportunity, but it's just been a swarm of Tigers at his feet all day. Just the two VFL goals this year. Sends it high. Sends it through. So Box Hill's sixth goal for the day, averaging 101 points a game this season as a number two attack in the competition behind the Tigers. But without three of their top five goal scorers in Vickery, Jones and Switkowski. That hasn't really been the issue. It's been one of the issues, but it just hasn't been down there enough. Conker tries to get away from O'Donnell. He's dumped in the tackle after he released the football. And Reece Conker will get the free kick. Yeah, they've given a lot, away a lot of free kicks today, Box Hill. Looking to be physical, but just been on the wrong side of the line too many times. As Darley spreads it wide and finds Jaden Short. He pushes it down the line to Lloyd. And they really have controlled the tempo of this game for all but about... 10 or 12 minutes in the middle of the second quarter. Yeah, it's been the kicking that's been superb, which allows you to maintain possession. They've gone at 72% today by foot with a slippery ball. Minaju delivers. He's looking for Ballard. Morrison. Mirror. Slips into the hole, takes the mark. Wants to move it quickly. Gives it over the top to Moore. Wants to run away from Beasley. He's got a runner coming past Kennedy. He's got to be quick. Feeds a handball. O'Donnell gathers. Gives it to Whitecross. Whitecross to Murphy. Back onto his right boot. Looks for an option. He's got Pitnet again at 55. Great desperate lunging effort from Ballard. Ball spills to Kennedy. Spears it inside 50 and finds his skipper, Dave Mirror. Well, Mirror, who's been so good down back for Box Hill today. One of the few shining lights for the Hawks. Has gone forward now. He kicked their first goal of the game in that second 10 minute mark of the second quarter he's lining up for his second goal real heart and soul player of this side he'll be bitterly disappointed with their performance this afternoon he's kicked just six goals in his 125 game vfl career from 45 meters out gets a consolation it's chris newman coaching from the sidelines now out of the box just having a chat to a few of the players as they come off just hasn't got enough out of a lot of their players that have been good this year guys like Brolick and Murphy Aducci's been really quiet they just haven't had Vickery and Jones to work off as the reference point have they supply the other issue no 50 game. inside 50s to 35 the way of the Tigers and Moraji Baji well again it's just another free kick given away that Richmond getting lower and harder and Box Hill players continue to infringe by tackling them high. Mitch O'Donnell's trying to do some origami with Ivan Marich. Marich laying on the top, top of him. He's going to get to play in a grand final next week. 
in his last ever game. We saw a Ruckman bow out last year. Will Minson winning a premiership at VFL level in his last game. Martin Marich looking to try and do similar. Bachelor at halfback. In board for Miles, whose brilliant season continues. 27 possessions here this afternoon. Conker into space. Garth White. Too much on it for Markov. White cross to mop up. Tries to step the athletic Markov and does. White cross down the line. Strong presentation from Mira. Earns the free kick from Beasley. Who would have thought coming here, Dave Mira would be the main goal kicking presence for Box Hill? It says a bit about their day and their lineup as Taylor Hunt whacks it away from Billy Murphy. Polled 10 votes in the A Todd medal on Monday night to finish one vote behind. The winner, Goy Locke from the Casey Demons, played just the seven games for the season. Billy Murphy's had a great year in the senior grade, 21 goals from 12 matches. A season that you think will set him up to be a very good player for a long time to come. Worth mentioning the Young Guns game, the AFL Victoria Young Guns game was on prior to this. Team Green and Team Black with a number of players from the TAC Cup and the VFL. It was... The team coached by Geelong's Dan Lowther getting the win by four points in the end. Side that featured Derek Smith from Richmond and Matt Darby, who we saw play some games for Essendon during the course of the season. Derma Brereton's. Devlin Brereton was running around. Sam Fowler and Mason Blakey, a couple of Northern Blues, also featuring prominently. Speaking of prominent, Sean Hampson's been everywhere in the air today. Kick goes wide towards Morris, bounces off his chest. If there's been a possession for wrestles today, he would head every man on the ground. Steve Morris, he's been involved in everything again. Hampson uncontested. Back towards Miles, who tracks it to the line, just keeps it alive. Goes long to half forward, Scholl sets himself. That's clearance number eight for Anthony Miles. He just continues to front up every single week and put up big numbers. Unbelievably consistent, hasn't he been? As Child spears it low to the pocket and there's Steve Morris on the end of it and this would be a popular goal. Thinks about giving it off. Played eight of the first ten games in the AFL last season then did his ACL. Just the one AFL game this season in round six. Missed seven weeks with a hamstring. Played the last month in the VFL team and has really added plenty from the pocket. Out of bounds on the full. I remember seeing vision of his hamstring too. It was a bad one. He was running at full pace, which is the only way he plays. It honestly looked like he got shot by a sniper. Hit the deck hard. Missed that seven-week period. It looked like his season might be over. He's done well to fight back and play good footy. Stewart. Guess who? Morris strips him short, gets into some clear air, puts the kick forward, not the bounce that Moore wanted. Lennon at the back, a disciplined kick to try and work it back to the top of the square. They come, they collide, and it's Miles. He was a prominent hawk early in the contest, quite since just his ninth possession. This troll was nearly able to apply a sizzling tackle on Warren. And the Hawks, as they have all day, just struggling to get possession chains going. Now it's heavily forcing the kick forward. Fisher wanted Murphy, couldn't find him. Sliding in Hams, will go again. Alice drags it in under him. Well done, Hams. Gets back to his feet, but nowhere to work in in the end. And Alice has got the clinches on Murphy. John O'Rourke just in the hands of the trainers there. Just clutching at his ankle from that contest before. And a rotten run with hamstring injuries, John O'Rourke. Yeah, he hasn't really had a good run at it since he's been at Hawthorne in the three years he's had, has he, Jase? No, he's had a really tough go of it. Had a hamstring for three weeks in the middle of last season, which totally upset his year. This year he missed rounds one to three and then rounds five to 17. So his last two seasons have been marred by hamstring problems. As Miles goes long, and once again, Sean Hampson he's putting his name the up there. He's like... Unbelievable performance from the big man. Goes inside 50. Moore set himself at the back. Morris hunts White Cross. Links up with Evans. White Cross under pressure. Morris, he slips the tackle. Evans 
Floats a kick out towards Kennedy, spills off his hands. Miles grits his teeth, tries to roll through the tackle, can't do so. Just on Sean Hampson, four contested marks for the day. He's really got his timing in his hands back, hasn't he? Griffiths. Here comes Moore, tries to crash through Hams. Ball dribbles outside the 50 momentarily. Markov goes hard at it with Murphy. And Murphy tackled Markov into Stewart. Stewart arguing his case. He was standing still, Kate Stewart. Markov was tackled into him. It's probably a pretty fair case, I would have thought. Yeah, it's, it's one of those funny ones. It doesn't happen too often. Not much Kate Stewart could do there. He's not going to jump out of the way. That's what he's saying. He ran into me. I was just standing there. But Markov, the beneficiary of the free kick. And this would cap off a really big day for Oleg Markov. 27th possession coming up. Starts to swing left. Hasn't made too many errors today with ball in hand. He's been superb. His rebound off half back. His dash, his run and carry and delivery into the forward line. Yeah, he'd suggest his next cab off the rank if Richmond require any reinforcements at AFL level. Warren's kick up the middle. Marriage there. Great crumbing from O'Donnell. They'll try and work this ball forward. Richmond numbers at the back. Garthwaite needs the bounce before Stewart's on the scene. Short can gather. Work his way around. Brolic has the bounce and likes his chances to dash away. Squeeze the kick for Miles. And here go the Tigers. Lloyd through traffic on the outside manner. Campbell over the top, they link up again, and an abundance of numbers for him. everywhere. Lennon can have a bounce, steady, take his pick of his options. Oh. Ballard on the stretch, off to Morris, Menadju, steadies, back to Moore, looking for a fourth. And the Tigers are grand final bound. That was good bold ball movement. As soon as they got the overlap, there were plenty of options in the Richmond forward line. Eventually got into the hands of Moore, who wheeled around and kicked his fourth and sealed the deal. Alicia Eva, boundary side, report on Shea Bolton. Yeah, Shea Bolton's just put the jacket on, boys. I don't think there's any injury to report. Craig McRae just managing his players through now. Putting him in cotton wool. Smart, smart coaching. Tigers with an AFL preliminary final and a VFL grand final to come in the next week. Eight days at least is Murphy. One meter. Again, play on. Finds Hanrahan to Morrison from 55. Keeps it low inside 50. Mira playing forward. Short receives the football through the hands of Markov. Time to go again. Confronted by Aducci. Keeps his feet. Tries to work through the tackle, but Vincent takes him to the line. Markov gets up smiling. Griffiths and Bolton watching on from the boundary line. Yeah, it's just smart coaching. You don't need Bachelor to. Bachelor as well. Hampson there too. And Miles starting to take off some of their big names. Yeah, you don't need to uh, risk any potential injury or anything else. Manager taken high as Hunt and Moore continue their two man war in the rear of picture. And Brownie, this must be a wonderful feeling. When you're in a preliminary final, you're in complete control and you know you're headed for grand final day. Yeah, well, we quite often say preliminary finals are, are tougher to win than grand finals. Certainly those games go down to the wire. I'm not sure about that kick, but... <laughs> Menadju's kick straight to Hanrahan. Can he capitalise from the boundary line? He yes. can! Wonderful finish, Ollie Hanrahan. Nice finish from the 19-year-old from East Brighton and St Kevin's. Got a new deal with the Hawks. He's on their rookie list. He'll be around in 2019. Didn't play TAC Cup football. Focused on school cricket and school footy with St. Kevin's. Really only started to focus on footy primarily late last year. But such as his talent, the Hawks rookie listed him. And you can see why with finishes like that. It's a different pathway that uh, he took, but clearly he's got plenty of ability. He's overlooked in the draft, so the Hawks just pounced on him. He's re-signed for next year, but yeah, Jace, as I was saying, when you get this far in front in a preliminary final, you can just, one of the few times you can really just enjoy your footy, um, not have to worry too much about anything else going on. You know you're through. The Hawks trying to avoid their lowest score of the season. They kicked 8-10 in round 18 in the loss to Port Melbourne. 
Morris tackled, works it forward. Lloyd, normally smart by hand and foot. Child presents again. Hunt at the fall. Caught high. And an opportunity to kick their 19th of the afternoon as Marbio Chol getting involved in back play with a bit of by play with guess who? Kurt Heatherly. And again, they're in lower and first, Brownie, yeah, to win the free kicks. Just another free kick. 32-17, the free kick count in favour of the Tigers. So they've nearly doubled them, and it's been absolutely fair enough too because they've been the ones just going harder and... It's just been poor, te poor tackle technique on Box Hill's part. So Taylor Hunt for his second, misses it left. Quiet day by his season numbers. Been in their best players seven times, averaging 20 possessions and four marks. That kick there is 10th possession of the afternoon. He's had the running pitch battle with Andrew Moore, so he's been an important job. And the 50-metre penalty will bring Max Warren out to centre-half back. Gives it off to Murphy, he accelerates through the middle of Fort Burn Stadium. Delivers short to Pitternet. He's yeah. kept trying hard today. Yeah, he's been good. Stewart from 50, he unloads, but tugs it right. A lot of Ruckman big men don't get much of the ball. Pitternet's come out today, he's had 15 disposals. He's gone forward and kicked that goal in the last quarter. And that's all you can ask from a big man. Continues to develop, he's still only 21 years of age. Now he, with three full seasons in the system, a ruckman in waiting for Hawthorne at AFL level behind the likes of McAvoy. Segler to come back has missed a lot of footy with injury. And Pitternet certainly in the mix as well. So Kurt Headley, a long kick, gives himself some momentum, but he's at left. Kurt Headley will. Turned 23 on New Year's Day, 2018, and be another fascinating study as this Hawthorne list morphs into a new era. Went through the New Zealand Academy, and he's done a really good job. He kept Jordan Lyle to one goal in the qualifying final, which was a big ask, the Frosty Miller medalist. Oh, great mark from Stewart. Good to see. Still prepared to work hard on defence inside Ford 50, Leighton have an opportunity to kick his second of the afternoon. Well judged there by Stewart. Richmond just looking for the switch and he cut it off nicely. Another Hawk, probably in a similar vein to Heavily. Today his 30th AFL game. Played seven AFL games across his first two years after being a rookie coming out of South Rio and Katanning. Bruce the left foot and just didn't get a chance to work it back. Follow Kate Stewart's progress a little bit closer than other players. I presented him with his first game jumper against Melbourne in round 20 last year. And just have a little little bond with a guy when you do that. Pitternet off the hands of the contest. Manor hits it at speed. Sizzling kick towards Hunt at half forward. Spills off the contest, back to Manor involved again, playing himself into a grand final spot. Ballard has it 55 from goal. Interesting, he's been their number one midfielder today. He's played as a key forward for much of the day. White cross goes to ground. Free kick, going the Tigers' way. It's going to Ben Lennon. I thought that free kick was going to go the other way there. Ben Lennon clearly pulled White cross to ground. I think Ben Lennon just fell and then dragged him down. Brendan Whitecross agreed with you. Yeah, well, sadly for him, the umpire didn't, and Lennon can go back and kick his third. He's worked into the game nicely. It was pretty quiet in the first half, but in this second half, he's really contributed. But goal number three for Ben Lennon. Just pushes it across the face. Two goals, two his afternoon. Margin now to 64 points. We approach the 26-minute mark of the final term at Northport. So will the pattern continue? The Tigers won AFL and VFL reserves premierships in 77 and 97. Moore, who's been prominent today, takes the mark. Wants to slow things down. Four goals. The tally of his day. He's going to enjoy the expanses of Etihad Stadium, you'd imagine, next Sunday. Is there one more highlight left? Ball to ground level, heavily. 
kick into the corridor. Marich dives and is desperate. Short. Couldn't get through the tacklers. O'Donnell and Kennedy. So free kick will go against Ballard. Paige Stewart continuing to work hard. Connor Glass, 12 months ago, a development league premiership player with Box Hill. Today, a VFL prelim final as Mirrors wrapped up and just couldn't find a way to allow the boot to meet the Sharon and Hugh, Be Hugh Beasley. What a reward this is. He'll head to a grand final and a 16th possession here in a prelim. Sam Darley, the skipper, West former ball. Western Bulldog. To Ellis. Now Garthwaite. Uses the runner. Jaden Short has been at it all afternoon, charging off half back. Taylor Hunt sets himself. Good contest from Warren, who lands awkwardly. Very awkwardly. Max Warren in a lot of pain. That would be disastrous for him in the final minutes of the season. That looks serious. Play on the call. We'll come back to it. Oh, he immediately put his hand up. He knew straight away. Well, that's 20 metres from us. And the look on his face, as soon as I looked at him, told me he knew he was in a world of trouble. Took his mouth guard out, threw it on the ground. And he knows he's done something serious. This is terrible, terrible news for Max Warren. He's got one metre where he is. Uh, that is just cruel. Now, he did really well. He came back with the flight. Lloyd from 50. Gives it a ride. Will it get there? Off the hands of the contest, more behind. He found the body of Taylor Hunt in that marking contest. He did everything right, but when he landed, let's just watch his... Oh, the ankle. Leg. The left ankle. And you can see he's put his hand straight up. That left ankle got caught horribly underneath him, and over he went. And that's, that's serious. So I think the game will stop here for the stretcher to come out. Oh, he's trying to get to his feet. He's going to get carried off, but that is not what you you want ever, let alone at the 28-minute mark of the last quarter of a lost preliminary final. So Max Warren, the former Kangaroo, spent four years at North for one AFL game back in 2014, originally from Hillsville. Came to Box Hill last season, played 17 games, and again has been a critical part of this team this season, playing his 20th this afternoon. Let's hope that isn't too serious. It certainly looked horrendous. Just a cruel way for Max Warren's 2017 campaign to finish. We take a moment to think about Box Hill, Brownie, and what they take out of this season, their first season under Chris Newman their new coach. Missed the finals for the first time in a long time last year. Back in the action, they were a pace setter this year. It was Williamstown, Box Hill and Port for most of the season. A bit of way to finish this year, but some real positives to take going forward. Yes, certainly. They, they've got a really experienced playing group, this Box Hill. So in particular, their back line with guys like Warren and Mira. Vickery was good this year. Here's Hanrahan. They get it inside 50. Once again, Pittanet goes back, but Garthwaite cuts it off. They just lost some really critical players late in the year. You know, Switzkowski has been absolutely superb. Um, yeah, Ty Vickery, as I mentioned, multiple goal kicker most weeks for Box Hill and Jones as well. So you lose that. That throws out your structure significantly late in the year. Conquer stripped of the football. Evans taken down by the Manic Manor. What a performance it's been from the youngster, the 20-year-old from Walla Walla really just epitomizes that Richmond intensity and effort. And almost the perfect prototype 23rd man. Strong body, 20 years old, playing senior foot in the ovens and Murray League. He's got a great record there. He kicked 19 goals from 11 games for North Aubrey this year. And he's slotted into this Richmond team beautifully across the VFL season. Credited coach Jason Ackermanis a couple of years ago for inspiring him to try at the next level. Stewart continues to try hard, shares it on the outside to O'Donnell. Can only hope he gets a run at it in 2018. Fresh and fit. Kick smothered. White cross down in back play. And Ballard trips. And those words that we haven't uttered too often in football. Richmond into a grand final. The Richmond Football Club into its first grand final at any level in 35 long years. The Tiger train gathering steam.
and headed for Etihad Stadium next Sunday. Richmond by 65 points. 18-11-119. Defeat Box Hill, 8-6-54. Wonderful performance from Richmond. They were switched on, aggressive, intense from the opening bounce this afternoon. They came out and mugged Box Hill in that first quarter, led by 40 points at the first change. It's and then a, cruise to victory. Yeah, it's the perfect start when you G'd up for a nice pol a preliminary final against a side that beat you earlier in the year. You want to come out firing, and they certainly did that. And all of a sudden, it was six goals to none before Box Hill started to get any momentum at all and they just continued to play with intensity and ferocity right till the final siren oleg markov was outstanding this afternoon he shone from the opening bounce serious with alicia Riva. certainly was outstanding 27 disposals and a goal but it was a real big team performance today wasn't it yeah yeah it definitely was i think we came in with the mindset to uh to, to make someone else in your team better um and i sure hope so uh, i hope we did perform that but um yeah no it's good and you love it when your forwards are kicking goals, but you love it even more when your forwards are tackling and kicking goals. How important was the forward pressure today? Yeah, it was amazing, and it made our job a lot easier down back, I guess. Uh, you sort of, the ball's always coming out scrappy, um, and it just gives them another chance. And again, tackles win, win games, I guess. Well, congratulations on the win, and good luck next week. Thank you very much. Thanks. Great performance from Oleg Markov. 27 possessions. Richmond, 65-point winners. They are into the VFL Grand Final.